Okay, okay, okay. It is time for another episode of The Get Up. Um, what's The Get Up? The Get Up is a slingshot. It's a chance to pull back your day and launch you into a new adventure with encouragement, motivation, and practical actions you can apply immediately. Some days that means tips about working from home. Um, who can forget the episode where I taught you the magical power of pants? If you're watching this right now, you should put on pants. Um, as I've said multiple times, pajamas are closed melatonin. Um, flannel by day three feels like failure. Other times, it'll be about how to accomplish big goals. I've spent the last 10 years helping people just like you accomplish big, amazing things. If you're curious about what you're capable of, read my latest book, Finish. Um, if you miss an episode, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm doing a ton of YouTube now. Um, I waited until 2020. I gave everybody else like a 15-year head start, and now like I'm all in. So look up John Acuff on YouTube. I'd love for you guys to follow me. So in today's episode, I'm asking a really simple question. Does social media turn people into jerks? That's a question I hear a lot, um, especially as tensions rise with coronavirus. I don't know if you've been on Twitter lately, but it is a dumpster fire. Um, at least it's not an election year, right? Oh, wouldn't that be terrible if we had corona plus an election year right now? Oh, that, would, that would be the worst. But the question is, is that social media's fault? We, were we all nice before and suddenly because of Twitter, because of Facebook, because of the next door app even, now we're all mean? I have a theory about that. So I'm going to teach you two things. My theory, and I'm going to teach you the question I ask every jerk now. I've got a new question that I'm asking people online whenever they're mean, rude, whatever. First, the theory. Social media didn't turn us into jerks. It just gave us access to every city's jerk. When I was a kid, I lived in Ipswich, Massachusetts. It's a small beach community on the North Shore, and it was magical. Think picking apples in the fall, and long walks under bright leaves, and bike rides to a cold New England coast. There was even a castle on the beach called Crane's Castle. There was a castle on the beach. They held the prom there. It was amazing. Now, I bet in that town there were at least, let's say, 100 jerks. But here's the thing. You didn't know about them, did you? In the 1980s and the 1990s, you only knew about the jerks in your town. If you lived in Franklin, Tennessee, you didn't have access to the jerks in Ipswich, Massachusetts, or Grapevine, Texas, or Denver, Colorado. But then the internet came along and was like, boom, here are all the jerks from every city and town on the planet all at once. And guess what? They're all super talkative. Ah, ah, ah. Social media might amplify your attitude like White Claw does, but it doesn't turn you into a jerk if you weren't already one. That's my theory. Now, what's the question I'm going to ask jerks online? The question I've developed? It's a little odd, but here's it. here it is. What color is your car? That's the question I'm going to ask. When somebody's rude, when somebody's mean, when somebody's a jerk, I'm going to say, hey, what, what color is your car? Why will I ask that? Because sometimes we forget that the stranger criticizing you online doesn't really know you. We forget that in most cases. You know, we've never met them. Um, we've never talked to them on the phone. We've never texted with them. We've never even been in the same room. We get all this real anger based off of fake interactions. When somebody is rude to you online that you don't know, it's the equivalent of someone pulling up next to you at a red light, asking you to roll the window down, and then criticizing you from their car. Hey, I, uh, I read your bumper stickers, um, which are like tweets, and I really know who you are now. Like I've got a real sense of your entire life, and I'd like to have a long conversation about why your beliefs are wrong. Um, let's stay at this red light for like an hour. And not only that, I'd like you to think about this interaction all day. If someone said that to you at a red light in a car next to you, you wouldn't throw the car in park and be like, hold on, sweetheart. I got I to gotta hear what this guy has to say about my life. Like this guy really knows. He read my bumper stickers and I've never met him, but he's now going to tell me the value of who I am as a person. So I should stop and listen to that. You'd never do that. You know what you do? You drive away and say that that person was crazy. That's exactly what's happening online right now. Happened to me last week. 
It happened to me very, very recently and I started engaging and I started wasting creativity and time arguing with someone I've never met. It's going to happen again. People are stressed out right now and so there are going to be more petty arguments than usual. The next time someone tries to start one with you and they're going to, I dare you to ask them, hey, what, uh, what color is your car? This will confuse them a bit, but it'll also give you a chance to pause and remember, oh yeah, that's right. I'm at a red light, this is fake, and then drive off. Life is too short to give your time, creativity, and energy to jerks. There are a lot of other people in your life who need it more. That's the get up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe on YouTube. Just look up John Acuff and have a great rest of your day.